A Short History of Space Station Designs The fact is, we've been launching space stations into orbit since the early 1970s. However, Tiangong stands out as something straight out of science fiction, rather than adhering to the usual standard, which is essentially akin to a submarine in space. Interestingly, the inaugural space station, a single-module Soviet design called Salyut, was deployed in 1971. Just two years later, in 1973, NASA surpassed this achievement with Skylab, constructed within the hollowed-out upper stage of the colossal Saturn V moon rocket. It wasn't until 1986 that the world witnessed the deployment of the first modular space station, dubbed Mir by the Soviets. The assembly of the seven-module Mir station spanned a decade, even amidst the collapse of the Soviet Union, firmly establishing Russia as pioneers in space station development. When we finally reach the International Space Station, ISS, which has become so familiar to us today, it's evident that it bears a striking resemblance to Russia's Mir, given that the Russians had decades of experience with multiple space stations, while NASA had virtually zero practical knowledge. It's not unreasonable to view the ISS as a Mir version 2.0, the design approach of the ISS can be traced back from Salyut to Skylab to Mir, showing a lack of significant progress or evolution in design. In fact, Skylab stands out as the most aesthetically pleasing among them, despite being constructed 50 years ago. The Soviet design aesthetic carried over to the ISS resembles that of a submarine rather than the Starship Enterprise, with its cramped and cluttered interior filled with pipes and wires protruding from all angles. Looking ahead to China's Tiangong, the disparity is stark. Despite only a 20-year gap between the ISS and Tiangong, the latter represents a century's worth of progress in design and functionality. The evolution of Tiangong Space Station. The Tiangong now comprises three modules forming a T-shaped space station, measuring 55 meters in length and 39 meters in width, orbiting approximately 400 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The Tianhe serves as the central command module, initially launched in April 2021. Following this, the Wentian Experiment Module, which combines crew quarters, research lab and airlock functionalities, was added in July 2022. In November 2022, the Mengtian Module mirroring the Wentian was introduced solely for research and experimentation purposes. This construction pace is notably swift compared to historical precedents. For instance, it took both Russia and NASA two years to render the ISS habitable and the ISS itself required a decade of international collaboration to reach completion. Despite appearances, this station's emergence is part of China's long-term plan, referred to as Project 921 initiated in the 1990s. Phase 1 of this plan involved developing and launching crew-capable rockets and spacecraft, namely the Long March 2F and Shenzhou, which debuted in 1999. By 2003, this system had successfully launched the first Chinese astronaut into low Earth orbit aboard the Shenzhou 5 mission. This marked the beginning of phase two of the plan, which primarily served as a practice phase. By the time of Shenzhou 7, China had achieved its first spacewalk using domestically developed extravehicular suits. Subsequently, the country initiated the deployment of test modules resembling miniature space stations. Chinese crews embarked on their first extended stays in space honing their skills in docking maneuvers between the test modules and Shenzhou spacecraft. During this period, China also advanced the development of its Shenzhou spacecraft known as the Heavenly Ship, designed as a cargo transport vehicle capable of carrying up to 6,500 kilograms. This spacecraft was intended to be launched using the modern Long March 7 rocket, replacing the 2F variant that debuted in 2016. Currently, Phase 3 of the plan is underway, focusing on the development and construction of a new space station named Tiangong, or Heavenly Palace. China's commitment to building its own space station is fueled not only by the allure of space exploration, but also by geopolitical factors. China's exclusion from the International Space Station plays a significant role in this endeavor. In 2011, the United States enacted a ban on Chinese participation in the ISS, citing national security concerns. This prohibition was formalized through a Department of Defense Act passed by the US Congress, which barred NASA from collaborating with China using its funding. The reasons cited primarily revolved around human rights issues and national security concerns. However, the overarching fear in the US was the potential for China to engage in espionage or intellectual property theft, given the history of clandestine activities between both nations spanning decades. This apprehension led China to pursue an independent path culminating in the development of their own space station. 
upon examining the interior of the Tiangong, one immediately notices its spacious and open layout. A notable departure from the International Space Station, the Tiangong boasts a minimalist and modern design, despite sharing a similar outer diameter with ISS modules at approximately 4.2 meters or 14 feet. However, the discrepancy lies in the internal volume, attributed to several factors. Firstly, Tiangong modules are notably longer than their ISS counterparts such as the Wentian and Mengtian modules at 18 meters or 59 feet, compared to the 8.4 meters or 28 feet of the Destiny Lab on the ISS. Secondly, advancements in technology have allowed for more compact systems on Tiangong, reducing the need for extensive cabling seen in the ISS. Many systems on Tiangong operate wirelessly, streamlining operations and enhancing efficiency. Additionally, much of the station's technology is concealed behind plain white panels when not in use contributing to its clean and modern aesthetic, though the rationale behind this approach remains speculative. The initial module of Tiangong successfully entered orbit in April 2021. This core component, known as Tianhe, translates to Harmony of the Heavens. Tianhe weighs 20 tons and has a maximum diameter of 4.2 meters. It includes all essential elements for a fully operational space station, capable of accommodating a crew of three. Its features comprise solar panels, propulsion systems, life support systems, a robotic arm, and a sophisticated docking node with an airlock. The core module consists of three primary sections. Beginning from the smaller end, there is a spherical multi-docking node equipped with four ports, one of which is permanently connected to Tianhe. The port opposite the core module serves as the main docking port for the station, facilitating the docking of the Shenzhou crew vehicle. The two side ports on the multi-docking node serve as berthing ports for the twin research labs attached to the core module. The bottom port on the node functions as a secondary crew docking port, utilized during crew handovers when two groups of three Taikonauts are occupying the station simultaneously. The top port serves as a hatchway for crew members to exit the station and conduct spacewalks. Moving up to the narrow cylindrical section of Tianhe, one finds the crew quarters, which consist of individual bunks for three crew members and essential facilities, such as the space toilet. At the wider end of the core module lies a working area, housing three experimental racks and the station's propulsion section, which maintains orbital control. Additionally, there is another docking port at the end of the module designated specifically for the Tianzhou cargo craft. This port also serves as a future docking point for the Chinese Space Telescope. Tianhe also hosts the station's primary robotic arm, measuring 10 meters in length, although slightly shorter than the 17-meter-long Canada Arm 2, currently operational at the ISS. The Chinese arm possesses similar capabilities with potential for expansion. On July 24, 2022, China launched their Wentian Research Laboratory module for the Tiangong Space Station. The name Wentian translates to Heavenly Quest. This module, weighing around 20 tons, was deployed using the Long March 5B rocket, which is China's first heavy lift space launcher. The Long March 5B was responsible for placing the three modules of the Tiangong into their 400 km high orbit. The Long March 5B rocket configuration is notable for its unique design. It utilizes a hydrogen fuel burning core stage and is equipped with four liquid fueled side boosters burning RP 1 kerosene. This combination makes the Long March 5B the third most powerful rocket currently in service worldwide, after the Falcon Heavy and the Delta IV Heavy. The process used by the Long March 5B to place these 20-ton payloads into orbit is both unique and controversial. After the rocket clears Earth's atmosphere at around 100 kilometers in altitude, the four side boosters detach, while the core booster engine continues to burn. Unlike typical rockets which undergo full-stage separation at this point, the Long March 5B remains intact. The core booster engines propel the module all the way to its orbital insertion point before finally separating. This results in the majority of the rocket structure being in orbit, rather than falling back into the ocean immediately. However, it's not in a stable orbit, so it will gradually lose altitude over a few days and re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. These objects are too large to completely vaporize like a typical satellite. Instead of remaining intact, they break into chunks that descend to Earth's surface. This was the case with the Long March 5B booster stage, which fragmented over the Indian Ocean, scattering debris over the islands of Indonesia. Moving on to the Wentian module, it serves a dual purpose on the space station. It includes three additional crew sleeping quarters, increasing the station's capacity to accommodate six individuals at once. Furthermore, 
It facilitates various scientific experiments and houses two expansive solar panels spanning 55 meters from tip to tip. These cutting-edge solar cells are thin and flexible to maximize surface area and efficiency, generating around 7 kilowatts of electricity for the station. The Wentian module features four experimental rack spaces dedicated to research projects in life sciences, biotechnology, and variable gravity effects. Additionally, there is space for external experiments allowing attachment of nodes to the ship's hull for data collection. Crew members can access these external attachment points via the airlock and hatch on the Wentian, which serves as the primary airlock for spacewalks. Moreover, a secondary robotic arm measuring 5 meters in length accompanies the Wentian. This arm can traverse the station, grabbing onto various attachment points to perform tasks. Interestingly, it can link up with the main arm to form a 15-meter-long robotic arm comparable in size and capability to the Canada Arm 2 on the ISS. The third and final significant component of the Tiangong puzzle is known as the Mengtian, or Heavenly Dream. This research laboratory module arrived at Tiangong in October 2022. Similar to the Wentian, Mengtian lacks crew sleeping quarters, providing more space for experimental racks. Additionally, it features its own airlock serving as a secondary cargo port and boasts a giant solar panel array identical to the Wentian's. The inclusion of this third module has fully powered the station, bringing it to full functionality. Then, there's the Chinese Space Telescope currently under development. It's anticipated to possess capabilities akin to the Hubble Telescope, operating independently from Tiangong but orbiting nearby. Unlike the Hubble, it can dock with Tiangong for servicing and upgrades, providing a significant advantage. Moreover, China is contemplating further expansion of Tiangong, as revealed at a recent International Astronautical Congress. Plans include increasing the station's modules from 3 to 6, uh, with a new multifunctional expansion module to be launched in the coming years. Additional full-size modules are expected to join the station in around four years. However, International research projects arriving at Tiangong may be limited, albeit in collaboration with the United States Office for Outer Space Affairs and the European Space Agency. So, that's a promising start. However, given the relatively small size of Tiangong at the moment, it's unlikely that we'll see international crew members visiting. Expansion in the future might change this, but for now, it's unlikely. Additionally, due to the Wolf Amendment, American involvement with Tiangong is also restricted. This legislation, which prevents Chinese astronauts from visiting the ISS, works both ways, prohibiting American astronauts from engaging with the Chinese station. This overview should provide a clearer understanding of how Tiangong operates and what's currently happening up there. Ideally, global political tensions will ease in the future, allowing for greater collaboration. Unfortunately, with ongoing events around Taiwan, this seems unlikely in the near term. Thanks for watching.